Hi, uh, so today I'm going to show you how to install a 10-foot uh, copper pipe grounding rod. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of the garden hose method, um, but I'll just go through how I use it. I use it for all my grounding rods, and it seems to work very well, and it's relatively quick and easy to install. Um, you know, I use the thinner copper pipe rather than the thicker uh, because it costs a little bit less money, uh, but it works just as well. Unless you're concerned, you're going to bend it. Um, the thin stuff works fine. Okay, so before I begin actually uh, getting the pipe into the ground uh, using the garden hose, I, I like to dig a hole uh, around the area, especially since this is going to be in the backyard of my grass that gets a lot of traffic and kids and dogs and whatever. So what I'm going to do is dig a hole uh, big enough to put this uh, this uh, gutter attachment to a downspout, put that in there, and put this cover on, and basically this will be flush with the surface of the ground, and a couple weeks to a month or so, it'll be almost invisible. Um, I have it adjacent to the sprinkler head here, which will keep the whole area moist and uh, you know keep the ground watered and uh, help keep conductivity high. But this will uh, allow water to go in, allow easy access to this grounding rod, which is non-permanent because it's right in the middle of my yard, and uh, and allow it to stay watered and keep people from stepping on the sharp ends of it. Um, if you're putting this under a tree or whatnot or somewhere where there's you know no people running around you don't have to do this and you can just put it flush to the surface. Um, you may want to actually put a funnel around the top of it uh, makes it easier to keep it wet. We'll catch some rainwater. Uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate that uh, before I'm finished though. Make sure you know if you have any underground utilities or whatnot. It's very important to notice to know where all that is before you start digging in. Even though this is only going to be a shallow hole, uh, you still want to know where things are. Okay, so now I'm going to dig a hole. Um, I'm just going to make it slightly larger than this, but the reason for this, is you're probably asking, well, why am I not using something round? Because when you try to take this off or turn it, it'll tend to spin around and make it harder to take off. This actually works really well in that, because once it's in the ground, it'll be really hard to turn and it won't. It'll make this easier to get out. This, this will get this can get stuck in there after time, you know, with dirt and whatever else gets in, in there being in the yard for a long period of time. Now I'll, I'll dig this hole uh, to get this started, but uh, you can do whatever every way you want. You might want to save some grass uh, to plug in around the edges when you're done. It helps, it helps to neaten up the yard when you're finished with the whole process. So I like to save the grass plug it makes the whole installation neat once you're once you're finished. So I'll just put that aside and start digging my hole. All right, I'm getting close. Maybe another inch or so. Uh, let's see. Yeah, a little bit more. Um, you know, the hole's still pretty wider on this. Another reason I'm doing that is so that once I have the uh, the pipe all the way in the ground. Uh, I can uh, use the pipe cutter to, to cut the end off and make it flush with the ground so it's not sticking up and in danger of somebody stepping on it should the cover come off. All right, so now uh, I think it's deep enough. Here's the, here's the uh, gutter thing, gutter piece, cover. And you can see it's below the surface of the soil. I'm just about flush with it. Now I'm ready to start uh, actually putting the pipe in. Uh, take this out, put it aside for later. Before you actually want to start putting the pipe in the ground, uh, I take your hacksaw. You want to cut the edge uh, to an angle. You know, 45 degrees is probably ideal. It's not critical, but it does help uh, when you're pushing this through the soil to have a bit of an angle uh, on the tip of the pipe. All right, so this makes a, oh, that was hot. This makes a nice uh, sharp angle, which will help when you're trying to push this down into the soil with the water coming out. Uh, it'll keep the pressure up because it's still small enough, got a good enough edge on it, but uh, definitely helps to get around uh, sometimes roots, rocks, or hard uh, clods of uh, soil. To connect the garden hose up to the copper pipe, what I do is I have a small piece of old garden hose that I scavenged from one that broke and all, is all, all worn out. Um, what the other end of this connects to has the standard hose fitting on the end of it connects up to uh, the remainder of my garden hose just like that nothing fancy and this is usually just a little bit 
tighter than a little bit wider than the, the half inch pipe you could probably get uh, I don't think you can get five eighths or three quarters in here but what I have is uh, I put it in eight to ten inches or so uh, here's the end of the pipe there eight to ten inches in here use a couple of these band clamps and tighten them down really good you want to tighten them down nice and snug because it keeps the pressure up and uh, keeps the water going through the hose of course make sure you do this with the flat end and not the end that you you just made the 45 degree angle on because then it won't help you very much so once this is going ready to go tighten it up really good keep all that in there and right now i'm ready to get started all right now here comes the fun slash hard part now, i use gloves because i got soft and squishy hands because i have an office job but here's what you do center it the best as you can and Get going. There you go. This is not easy. You have to go up and down, and yeah, you'll get wet. Make sure you don't get your camera wet. So you're gonna want to go up and down uh, with this. Um, switch pipes because, uh, well, like I was saying, use the thin wall pipe. I actually had to bend. First time I've ever done it, I've done six, six of these things. This will be number seven. First time I've ever had a bend with a thinner wall. Maybe use thick wall. Anyway, you're gonna wanna go up and down a bunch of times. It gets the cutting action going. It gets the uh, water down farther into the soil. <coughs> and just go carefully at it so you don't bend. But just basically keep doing this. There we go. And I know it's kind of weird going up and down like that, but believe it or not, it works. And you just basically work it way down, little by little. Goes down an inch or two at a time. Eventually, you get it down as far as you want. Now, the shortest I've ever gotten is a 10 foot rod to go down is six feet, and the longest I've ever gotten it to work is uh, almost nine feet in using the same method. So, mileage may vary, and if your soil is really rocky, you're not going to want to do this. Um, if it's rocky, you're not going to want to do this because the pipe won't take it, even in clay soil, it won't. Um, and uh, you're just going to want to get your basic copper coated steel grounding rod and put it in with an air hammer or something of that same type. This just about done here. Alright, that's all I'm going to do on that one today. And that's about it. Now that I've uh, managed to break my hose, but I'll just nib this, cut this off real quick and I can still use it. Uh, the reason it broke there is because, just like I've done previously, it uses holes five or six times all by itself. Uh, this edge is probably what's caused this to uh, be a problem. So this is good down in there now. And if you have this in an area, you might wanna, you can always, you know, an area that you're not gonna have a cover on it, you could put a funnel around it and it'll help to, uh, water to get down there. It'll keep water going on near the hose. So, uh, Next, what I'm going to do is use the cutter, pipe cutter. Might have to dig that just a hair wider. In fact, I'm going to do that. All right, so now that I've made room for this, uh, we're going to cut the pipe using just a standard pipe cutter here. Get that all torqued down and go around the pipe. There we go. All right, and so that's cut off. Like I said, if you're not going to have this in the middle of the yard, you can uh, you can put the funnel here, keep it flush with the surface. Rainwater will come in. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use this. This will be buried like that, and uh, it'll be set in there uh, and centered. Now, uh, and that'll keep it flush and people from keep people from stepping on it when you're not using it. 
Now, what I like to do before I put the, the top in, the uh, cover on, is to get this all uh, torqued down in there, put the clamp on in there, tighten it down. So once this is on, uh, snug it down a little bit, I kind of make it a little snug and then grind the teeth of it in there, and then I continue to tighten it some more, get it really tight in there, make sure you're well, well attached to the pipe. Alright. That's not coming. See, it's already squishing the pipe, so you know it's in there pretty good. Now, if you really want to go crazy uh, and make sure it's well grounded to the uh, the connection between the bracket and the rod is good, um, you can always solder it. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes because actually I never do this at one time and found, found that it was just a waste of time, I think. Of course, you want to make sure the water's out of the end of the pipe or it won't work too well, plus it can splatter. You gotta get the whole top good and hot. Work it in, work it down in there because it will go down into the seam in between the pipe and that. Anyway, you get the idea. Make sure your grass is not is nice and moist and not dry, or you can set your grass on fire. But you can see it fills up the space in there fairly well. This will take a time, a while to cool down. Now that everything's all soldered up, uh, I'll put my casing on here. We'll get that out of the way, and I will put the top on. Now, uh, some people. Uh, in, in hopes to increase conductivity like to pour some fertilizer in around it. I'll actually pour some down in the pipe too. Um, I put a combination of an iron-based yard fertilizer and um, a little bit of uh, table salt. And basically over time this percolates down. Now studies show different things. Some say it works, some say it doesn't work. Um, uh, Regardless, it, it may all depend on the soil type that you have. Um, you might put a little bit of the ions in there to get conductivity. Some people like to use copper sulfate, which actually is used to kill tree roots. If you do anything with copper sulfate or just straight table salt, do not use it near trees or shrubs. Don't put salt in your grass, it'll kill your grass. But absolutely do not use the copper sulfate uh, anywhere near a tree. Um, if you can see the canopy above you, you're too close to your tree, you can move another 20 feet farther away at the very least. Um, so basically, this is ready to go. Um, when I want to connect something up to it, pick up the wire, it's ready to go. This you know, this can be replaced relatively easily. If, if worse comes to worst, I can dig it out real quick and uh, replace the whole, uh, the whole connector. But that's a good start, um, and it's ready for me to uh, bury back up. And lastly, uh, you just basically start filling the back, filling the edges of this in. Don't get too much dirt down there. Put some grass right there. Put some right there. And you save some of this stuff that you, you kept. Shove it in right there, really good. Uh, and uh, with that, this grass will all grow. A couple, few weeks, everything will be nice and grown, grown back in there. Once all the grass is back in, you spread the dirt back out. Um, it's pretty, uh, pretty invisible in the grass. Um, open it up, connect your ground wire up to your ground on your antenna, and you're ready to go. You might want to check this, uh, you know, at least once a year to make sure it doesn't get too overgrown. Um, in fact, what I'll do next is I'll show you um, one that I've had in the ground for about five years now. Here's one that I installed in my front yard about uh, five or so years ago. I actually used a plastic container, ice cream container, with this I cut the bottom off, I still use the screw top, you see it needs a new top, got plenty of those saved up, but basically that's after about five years of sitting in the ground there. Uh, ground rod's still good, uh, everything's still attached, um, and I can use it whenever I want, but um, you can see that it gets fairly well covered. In this area gets mowed a little more frequently, uh, but, uh, but uh, all said and done after five years of being in the ground. This one has an easy top come off because I made a screw top, but it, it's pretty much hidden by the grass uh, until you want to use it. 
So this is the copper sulfate stuff that you could use um, to uh, to put around your grounding uh, your grounding rod, but you do not want to get this anywhere near trees because uh, it will kill the tree. It's copper sulfate based product, and you could pour that around there, but uh, it'll kill plants, it'll kill trees, and you don't want to use it for anything other other than that, or put it really far away from any trees you have. Maybe I should use the thick wall pipe. <laughs> that's all I'm going to do on that one today. And that's about it. So, barring uh, the pipe uh, bending and breaking, take care. So you don't do that. Maybe get the thicker wall pipe. Although, I've always used thinner and I never had a problem. Maybe I was being a little too, too anxious on it. Awesome! And the hose might go too if it's an old hose like I'm using. Anyway, I'm done.